Hey, Michelle, I heard they balling up in Harlem. That's what they doing? As they should be. Well, you are the queen of Harlem. You know who the king is. That's not self-proclaimed, neither. Ma, if I give you some halftime music, though? Ma? I wish Al B was alive for this shit right here. Now, lately, I've been doing my own thing. But I come right around with the pound I clown and be on. Get at you, mob style, whack you, pause, round of applause, in other words, clap you. Kelsey from my homes, homes, we gon' catch you. This actual, matter of fact, is factual. Put it in a capsule, now I'm gon' ask you. Tell me if you want me to. Put your brains on the floor, from the floor, we'll laugh and say that's good for you. It's a lesson, consider it a blessing. I had fire way before confessions. Now look here, I'ma ask you one question. Tell me if you And you crazy At your funeral, your girl at the casket Lean and give you that You're not the first one To make me feel like this And with the scope on the pump When I dump, I tell you I can't miss, no, no Enough of that on how we get his melon crack His girlfriend had him out to selling crack Took all the profit, dreamed she would sell him that Walked all over him, the nigga was a welcome man Nobody gonna tell him that If he raised his voice, she would say, who you yelling at? The sunken place, he fell in that I don't wanna stall him, I wanna call him Tell me if you want me to I don't waste time, hit him right on FaceTime Laugh and say that's Good for you Keep it G now, she with me now With him, she was so bored But girl, I wanna go for Tell me if you want me to Selling crack on a private jet up in the hell and back But no confusion, it's a reunion Hello y'all, welcome back Your yeah, murder here, he counting money He said can't man the hell with rap I'm only here to shit on niggas And piss on bitches, welcome ass I bought jewelry and bikes nigga Black Benzes and white figures Now I'm out here and I'm looking for More chandeliers and light fixtures Nah I don't like niggas, what's wrong with me? I'm a high nigga, but this 44 turn to Michael Jordan. I look and say, take flight, nigga. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. Use code MAZECAM or SAT to get up to $250 in bonus cash with your first deposit and a special pick. It's the easiest way to win on Underdog. I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Cam. Killer, what's good, man? See, I'm dressed back to business. Man. Yeah, you back to business. I'm glad you I'm made it back. Good, I'm not here to play any games. And me neither. Good, I'm, I'm excited. See, I'm- I'm, I'm dressed like the expert again. I got my lapel pins. Yeah. I'm ready for war. This is Desert Storm. You ever got one of these? What's that? The Desert Storm. <laughs> Decorated. <laughs> when you got that, your Spanish class? <laughs> Are you still a pescatarian? <laughs> I've done a lot of things when I wasn't you, around here, you know? <laughs> Are you still a pescatarian? <laughs> He can't stick with this show, man. <laughs> it was part of the show. You still a pescatarian? Yeah, pescatarian. Still? Yeah. I, they seat you out. Do you want me? <laughs> I got niggas following you. Are you want to stand by that? Do you want to stand by that you're a pescatarian? Yes or no? Let I me mean, know. So, it's what, like, what's pescatarian? You, I, you, you told me. I think. Is, is, I think you like. I think that it said fish. That's what you say. Fish and what else? <laughs> it's not chicken. <laughs> oh, I thought chicken was a part. They oh, fooled you, me there. I think you like the word uh, veterinarian, like veterinarian. Like that's what I'm saying. You might as well be a veterinarian. You was a pescatarian, a vegetarian. Now you a veterinarian. <laughs> I, think you like, I think you like. So they fooled you and said you yeah, took they told me that. I ain't put my phone away. All right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you, 
People watch the show and they taking pictures of you when you out. I'm just telling you that right now. They taking pictures of you. Talking about, can't yeah. no damn pescatarian line. I said. Niggas is suckers, yeah, yo. Yeah, niggas is suckers. I ain't gonna lie. Niggas is definitely suckers. At least bro. they keeping us accountable. Yeah, that's a fact. Because they sent me pictures of stat, but I ain't gonna bring it up. Oh, yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to imagine too. Because... <laughs> <laughs> No, can imagine. <laughs> In my business. Okay, let's yeah. get started. So the Sacramento Kings acquired free agent DeMar DeRozan in a three-year, $74 million sign-and-trade deal. Do you guys believe that this team will be a good fit for him? Um. Yeah, I think I think when it comes to Sacramento, you're looking at, you're looking at a team that has always been like one piece away from really making some noise. It seemed like they were able to push a, a championship Golden State team all the way to to its limits when they just had when they had the team that they have now. So when you add in a person like Demar Derozan who is on the clock to win, this becomes a really um, a really interesting team. I don't want to say sensational. I don't want to say championship bound, but it definitely gives them more legs, pause to stand on. When you think of everything else they got, they still keeping Monk. They're still keeping on Fox. So when you look at that on the perimeter, that's a nightmare to anybody because everybody on the wings are on the perimeter is very athletic. And to win in this league, you have to have great um, perimeter play and you got to have a pretty – it used to be you have to have a big man. But it seemed like it's going back to that when you see Porzingis – you see, um, what's his name? Jalen Brown, um, Drew Holiday, White. Um, I'm not trying to leave his name out. But Tatum and that and that particular team. This is that type of team that could match up with them if they had a big man. They they're perfect in matchup. So, um, you know, it seemed like everybody's shooting for Boston, and if you're shooting to try to compete against Boston. This was definitely an upgrade to their to their roster. Not sure what's happening with um what's his name? Harrison, Harrison Barnes. But this is definitely an upgrade. He spotted a trade. He's not there no more. Oh yeah. This is definitely an upgrade. I think it's cool. Me personally, I would have liked if he really wanted to compete for a championship. Me personally, I would have thought he might have went to Milwaukee or to Denver. Um Sacramento, even though they was hurt last year it seemed like they took a step back from the year before. Mm -hmm. um, and, Mark, and Monk was hurt, and we're not going to act like Monk isn't a big part of the Kings, but just as a team, it seemed like they took a step backwards, and I'm not liking where they were at finishing the season last season. Is DeMar DeRozan an upgrade from Harrison Mars? I would say, yeah. He's a scorer. He could go get a basket. Um, very durable. He's going to be there for the majority of the season. If he misses any games, he's not trying to take days off. Um, but as far as competing in the West Coast, I don't, I don't see this, let alone thinking about Boston, thinking about OKC, thinking about Denver, thinking about uh, the Dallas Mavericks, uh, <clears throat> maybe the Lakers. I, think, I don't even think they – if a healthy New Orleans, I wouldn't put them above a healthy New Orleans, um, especially with Murray getting there if Zion's healthy. But that's the problem with New Orleans. They're never yeah. healthy. So um, I'm, everything that I'm say, stating now is based upon health. Um, but I would have liked it better if he went to Milwaukee or Denver. Uh, with Denver, I don't know who the owner is off the top of my head, but you're going to have to spend some money, nigga. You're going to have to spend a couple of dollars. you letting niggas go. I get it. You probably don't want to go on a luxury tax. You're going to have to pay Jokic. <laughs> You're going to have to pay. Just re, re, um, you read up on Jamal Murray. I get it. You still have Aaron Gordon. You still have Michael Porter Jr. But you let two key pieces of your championship team go with Bruce Brown and Caldwell Pope. Letting them, they was a big part of that championship mm -hmm. team. And I thought that DeMar DeRozan could fill in that space. Um, that one of them two had left. And that may not have been enough because we see it wasn't enough without Bruce Brown uh, last season. Um, then I was thinking about, you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, DeMar's from L.A. Uh, 
We wanted yeah. to go back to California. Yeah, you know, Sacramento's not around the corner from LA. It's five, six hour drive, maybe a forty five minute flight. But people were talking about, damn, I wish he went to the Lakers or maybe the Clippers. They see him in the Kendrick video, et cetera, et cetera. Seriously, so you know, he on his West Coast shit. That's why I figured you went to Sacramento because I, I think, and, you know, thinking with the Lakers, as much as we praise Rich Paul and LeBron James for doing what they're doing, it may be a turnoff to some players. It may be like, yo, they don't need this. We got Rich Paul and LeBron running. We can't listen to what Jeannie Buss is saying. We can't listen to Rob Palenka because yeah. they listening to LeBron and Rich Paul. Mm -hmm. When you tell them other owners don't touch a player, and they don't touch a player. And then you tell the Lakers, draft Bronny, and they do it. Then you tell the Lakers, I, LeBron needs this for two years or three years or whatever. Then they give it to him. And then you get Anthony Davis. I know it's been over about a half a decade since he's yeah. been there. It looks like they're running the organization. And to some players, that may be a turnoff because if I got to go to management and talk about anything, it may not go in their head. It may be, it don't matter what you talk to Rob Palenka about. Because if LeBron don't yeah. okay it, he doesn't okay it. So I wouldn't have went to the Lakers. I get that. I'm not saying his mind state. I'm just saying how some players may think. Yeah. We look at the L.A. Clippers. It's a damn mess over there. The best thing they got is that new stadium that Bomber is building. Um, very dysfunctional. I wouldn't have went there. If you want to stay in the California, stay in the state of California. I believe to me right now at this current moment that would be the best bet for Demar Derozan if that was your thought process. I don't have any idea what his yeah. thought process was, but that'd probably be the best option for him at this state in his career. Yeah, one of the sources um, for for people that have insight on the Lakers said that one of the reasons why people didn't go to the Lakers, they said because there's no upside. If if something goes wrong, the the credit comes to them, and if if they win, the credit goes to LeBron. They was like, so that that's what turned a few um, free agents off of going there. They feel like if they win, LeBron looks like the genius. If they lose, they become their scapegoat for what didn't go well. Yeah, and not only that, and I don't think LeBron does this person person mm -hmm. um, pardon me, um, on purpose. It's just, you know, when he freelances and he talks, and especially on his podcast, and I never had any idea about it until I seen people put snippets together on uh social media or YouTube or so on and so forth of LeBron talking about former teams that didn't win when he says, well, we just didn't have the right pieces or we didn't have this momentum or this or this coach wasn't right, whatever he said. And then they compare it to what Michael Jordan says or Kobe Bryant says. The way they put it together, of course, you can edit things how you want, but it makes like when you put a, a clip out like that, LeBron not taking accountability, so uh, so to speak, and then you got him comparing one with me comparing them with the greats such as Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan, yep. and they're doing interviews saying it starts with me, it's my fault, this was my problem, we can't blame it on anybody else. And then you go to the next clip and it's LeBron saying, well, we didn't have the right pieces, we didn't have the right team. <laughs> it looks like he's yeah. not taking accountability, so that may turn players off as well. Okay, so Buddy Heal joins the Warriors as part of the first six-team trade in NBA history. He's reportedly signing a two-year, $21 million guaranteed deal. Do you think that Buddy was an addition that the Warriors needed? <sighs> nah. Nah. Shout-outs to Golden State. Shout-out to Buddy Hill. But for what? Buddy Hill hasn't done nothing to be giving him shout-outs. Like, nah, when he came from college, I thought he was going to be one of those guys. Something happened. Buddy Hill, if you're watching this, you let us down. We was we was rooting for you in the barbershop. We we thought when you got the number 24, you was about to play like Kobe. I remember that. I was like, yo, he he's gonna be dead nice. And then he went there, had, you know, uh, and then he ends up on Golden State. I don't know what Golden State is thinking. He's not Clay Thompson. I hope that's not what they're thinking. They got a young splash, brother. And and I don't mean it sound like killer if I if, if I'm going too crazy on you, pause on um, Buddy Hill, but you got to show up, especially with Clay leaving, and now you're in Clay spot. There's there's a lot riding on this, pause for real. You can't just go there and do what you did in Philly or do what you did in Indiana. 
you really got to show up. This is this is going to be must see TV because once once Steph got the ball and he gives it up, they know Steph is going to hit a three. So if he pass it, it's going to start to look like why you passed him the ball. You know what I'm saying? So, Buddy Hill, you got to you got to really show up and not. I'm not talking about 14 points and. I know Steve Kerr telling you to play a role, but listen, you got to be out of this world when you get to Golden State. They, they're they used to championships, and I have nothing against you just as a basketball purist. They broke up a don. This is how it looks to me. They broke up a dynasty for you. Even though it is not on you, that's what it seems like, and, and you're going to have to fill those shoes really, really fast. You don't have two years to play lackluster. This is Golden State. And last year, they didn't make the playoffs. So I think it's it's an enormous task. And I don't think he's up for it. And I'm very optimistic, you know. I'm, I'm very optimistic, but I don't think he's up for it. There's no signs to say that Golden State will be any better than last year. So you feel like Buddy Heald isn't a game changer? I, they only saying? gave him twenty one million. He's not a game changer. <laughs> when somebody's a game changer, you pay him game changer money, right? I mean, you you give you double Bronny's salary is almost his salary. That shouldn't be the case, right? Come on now, and shout out to Bronny. First I'm thing I would say to Mace hot. if I'm Buddy Hill is they didn't break it up for me. Shit was broke up already before <laughs> this, before I got here. So don't even try that, Mace. Don't try and act like yeah, niggas broke it up for me. Gonna come I, I'm across. just saying, if I'm Buddy here and, I'm t- and I hear what you say, first thing I'm saying is don't try that and put the onus on me. Shit was broken up. Niggas ain't been fucking with niggas for like a year now. They been trading them two weeks ago. Now it's on me, murder. Nah, I'm not riding with that, pause. If I'm Buddy Hill, that's, yeah. what, that's what I'm going to reply to you. Don't talk about... They broke it up for me. <laughs> no, they did not. <laughs> Jake Thompson been mad at the organization and all that. That's first and foremost. Back to besides with, besides that part when May said, yeah, hey, listen, Buddy Hill ain't the answer. One thing that I will give Betty Hill is this. He's like. Uh, you called the nigga Betty Hill. That tell you he ain't. But, exactly. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Thank you. Better, buddy. W- whatever. I don't even like calling a nigga buddy. <laughs> Yo, buddy. <laughs> I ain't hey, with all fuck. that. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> I don't really like the, you know what I mean? You ain't my buddy, you know? But see what happened last time nigga called me buddy. Pause. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <It> got <buddy>. dangerous. <laughs> um, but on a serious note, like, one thing that I'll say about Buddy Hill is that to me, when he's not like this player, and, and like he was lights out in college, and a lot of people don't know that he yeah. got an extra year in college, uh, so he's killing young him. niggas. Yeah, that helped him. He he was all right when he first got to the NBA. The last scene we have from Buddy Hill um, on the eye test is him missing the last shot in the playoffs against the Knicks fucking season up. Mm-hmm. I don't know why you took that last shot. That was not your place to take that last shot. That's the last thing I remember seeing Buddy Hill and yelling at the TV because not saying I didn't want the Knicks to win over Philly, it was more that I wanted to see another game because that series was so that series was so exciting. And this nigga takes the last shot. Wowing. But what I will say is, uh, what I will say is this, and I'm not comparing him to him, but he has that type of game if he gets in the right system, mm-hmm. if he gets the encouragement from Steve Kerr, um, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, that he could be a lower level J.R. Smith. He's streaky. He could get hot, you know, and I haven't seen it from him in a while, but I did see him. He's one of them people that can hit four or five threes in a game Mm -hmm. if he gets hot, if he has the confidence, if he's believing in himself. Um, And that's the right team to do that. But if you fuck up, like May said, they're used to championships, a lot of shit they didn't tolerate. Yeah. I could imagine, I could just imagine the shit that they used to say behind Chris Paul back last season. <laughs> you feel me, Pete? Yeah. <laughs> she, yo. We ain't uh, never been in this level. Yeah, yeah. I ain't seen no look this bad ever. ever. That, that's when we get them. <laughs> we get them like, Chris, what up? <laughs> 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 Shit. 
And I think Chris Paul will redeem himself this year at San Antonio. I just think it wasn't a fit for him. Mm -hmm. But that's situations. Uh, will Buddy Hill make a difference? Maybe, listen, man. The problem is this. We watched the dynasty get built to go to state. So anything underneath a dynasty, for this core, I'm talking about Draymond and, and, and Steph and Steve Kerr, and now that Clay is gone, uh, is unacceptable not making the Western Conference Finals for what we're used to. You know, we had this conversation going into the playoffs last year. Are we going to, and even throughout the season, are we, we going to get familiar with the new faces or are we going to miss the old faces? And Clay, um, Clay Thompson, I'll say Clay Thompson, Steph Curry and Draymond Green, Steve Curry included, they did not make the playoffs, which was unusual. We wasn't used to seeing it. They didn't even get it to the fucking play. -in. So is Buddy Hill the savior? No. Who the other nigga last week we was talking about went over? Yeah, Cal. Cal and Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Cal Anderson. Yeah. You put it that way. Cal and Buddy. It sound like... Keenan and the other nigga. <laughs> Keenan and Cal. Yeah, yeah, Keenan and Cal, Cal and Buddy. <laughs> no, I don't think this would make a difference in the Stack Western Conference. But congratulations, man. I, you're still playing. You're still an asset. Somebody still wants you. It's always, it always feels good to be wanted. Does this change the dynamic of the Golden State Warriors? Absolutely not. Both of them for their names. Okay, and then before we go to break, from what we've seen so far in free agency, last episode we talked about teams that we felt like made good trades. Who do we feel like is lacking and needs to urgently be doing something to help their team? Still early, but want to know you guys' thoughts. Mm. Well, you have Philadelphia. Philadelphia landed Paul George. You have um, the Knicks land Michael Bridges. All of those is excellent. You know, they're at the top of of – what people were doing during this whole entire time of of just being in this this free agency. Then you have then you have the Atlanta Hawks. They bust the move by sending um Murray to to the Pelicans. I think that is the sleeper of of the best trades out of all of them that went that went went for it. But then you got you got stuff like Cal. You got stuff like um Buddy, Buddy Hill, and I think in this free agency, the team that lost the most was the Lakers for some reason. And I'm not a, against the Lakers, but it seemed like when we were thinking free agency, we were thinking all these players they could get, like um, Murray, um, like um, DeMar. Who else they were supposed to get, huh? Clay. These are all of the things we're thinking is about to happen. All the Lakers about to bust one of these moves, and then they didn't. It seemed like they just put all of the focus on on that legacy piece that they were doing, and I think they they really really missed out. Um, even though they got some great young talent on that team, like I, I one thing about this Bronny situation made me zoom in on the Lakers and really look at the team, and I'm really Really looking forward, pause to um Doug Christie's son on on the Lakers. If they give him some light, he could really he could really do something. He remind me a lot of um that kid that they had at um Portland that started going crazy. Um, the the two guard that they traded you're, McCullum for. Yeah, you're talking about Max Christie, just Max Christie. Yeah, Max Christie. How, how tall is he? Uh, about. That I just point. know he was going crazy, and I was like, "Who is this?" And then I Six looked five. it up. Yeah, yeah, he looked like he could do. Something. Yeah, I do have a question for you because the comments were asking about Doug Christie. What about it? Because I don't. Just to clarify, I'm not for sure that's his father, but oh, yeah, they were my like, bad. They were wondering who <laughs> they kept wondering who Doug was, so like that's why I had to ask you. <laughs> But, yeah, I, I just I just assumed that because it said Max Christie. Christie. Yeah, he looked like he had you know curly hair. It looked like it could have been Doug Christie. Yeah, son. so it's part of me if it's not you know. Yeah. The exact question is who's not doing well. Yeah, who exact, do you feel that's like very lacking? easy for me. Um, the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, Milwaukee Bucks. And go about, to yeah, state. Man. Oh. Yeah, my nigga, you had your go. And, and you go had to a state. whole go, bro. 
Oh my God, yeah. murder! Yeah, <laughs> you didn't say yeah. You did not say the box. God, kill! I was agreeing with you. I wasn't saying it was my choice. I'm agreeing with you. We on the you, same you panel. You never answered a question. I did. See, you went around the world. I Who's the, the team? I said the Lakers. Okay, you going with the Lakers? That's a good one. I like the Lakers. Yeah. For me, I'm gonna go with the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, and Golden State's a good answer as well. Yeah. Um. Cause they lost a fucking key player, a nigga who had 18 point, who averaged 18 points. The niggas considered that a bad season. Um, I'm gonna go with the Milwaukee Bucks. This is a team that won a championship a few years ago, that was still um, a number one t- team in the East. Um, predictably, last year, I remember me and Mace were talking about uh, Milwaukee and possibly Phoenix, if not Denver. Mace was the Doug Bucks. Everything is family up there in Milwaukee. The the congregation, the, 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 <laughs> what's the family? She gave him a shout out, Murder. <laughs> DJ Hans. The, the Hans the family. Hans the family. Hans Fons <laughs> family. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> they was on the rise to where we were like Milwaukee, Milwaukee, Milwaukee. And this past um, postseason, we kind of, not just the postseason, the regular season, um, Damian Lillard might have been going through something personal, which is true, but his play seemed like Damn, they shouldn't have got rid of Drew Holiday. That's what you mm-hmm. that's what you got when you watch that. He said when he comes this season, you'll see the difference because he'll have his mind right. Cool. The Greek freak, nobody's scared of him. Or no, I'm not saying niggas scared of him, but he's not respected as he once was respected. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't respect him because he's still a problem. But they like, man, we figured that nigga out, man. Yeah. yeah like, just collapse on that nigga. He ain't gonna do but so much. He get to the foul line, do the one spin to the, nah, we call, call the offense, fuck all that. Yeah. Chris Middleton has not been playing the way Chris Middleton has usually played. Uh, the Greek Freak was hurt again in the playoffs last season. Dame Lillard got hurt again in the playoffs last season, and we seem to forget about him. Now, with the acquisition of Paul George to the 76ers, uh, um, Mikel Bridges to the New York Knicks, and um, Boston win the championship, we are now looking at a Milwaukee Bucks who's fourth in the East. This was a team last season before the season started. We were saying that we think they're going to win the East. Right now, presently today, they are fourth in the East. And before Paul George came, Paul George, the Sixers were third. The Knicks were second. Now the Sixers have moved to the second favorite. Knicks are third. And the Milwaukee Bucks are fourth. Let's think about this. It's a New York Knicks team. Um, now, they still haven't got to the conference final, but it's a lot of hope after last season. The New York Knicks, besides, and I'm not counting Jeremy Lin, besides a real superstar, haven't had a superstar since Carmelo Anthony. And the way they love Jalen Brunson is, is ridiculous in New York. They love him. Not only that, they love his, uh, his teammates. So now... You know, everybody I speak to in New York, yeah, nigga, we got the, we got the Killer Novas, nigga. This, that, no, Thriller Nova, all this crazy, <laughs> Thriller Nova, Killer Nova. <laughs> it's what they going around saying. <laughs> Yo, Nick, look, look, my nigga Nick, he over there hype about this. Nick, fire it up. Yeah, they, 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 I say, listen, listen to the next year. I said, I get it. I understand. It's, I said, but you have to realize, and I know y'all was hurt last year. Didn't do anything, and they don't want to hear it. I'm just telling you, you didn't do anything last year that you didn't do the year before. Yes, we did. We came in second, nigga. We <laughs> was in second. We finished second, nigga. I said, that's seeding. Great. So you didn't finish first, but great. You finished second. That's for your seeding in the playoffs to get to the same place you was at the year before. Killer, you hate it. I said, I'm, I'm just telling you what happened. <laughs> Nah, you don't fuck with us. You don't fuck with us. The nigga sin. He goes to my mom's grave site the other day. He sends me a video. Yeah, you know what we on. He got orange and blue flowers at the grave site. Thank you, sin. I know you love my mother like she was your mother. But relax. <laughs> relax. You know, that was her team from 19. 19- Y'all niggas is wild out there, man. Y'all got to calm the fuck down, B. I said it's July. <laughs> you try to reel you in with, with blue and orange yeah, the blue flowers. And orange, the blue and orange flowers. <laughs> talking about, you know, me and your mom, Tom, she was on. Okay. So, and, and trust me, I, trust me, anybody, my brothers, all my niggas in New York, they go see my mom. I really appreciate it. But you ain't have to send me that. <laughs> you knew what you was doing, nigga. 
it's all good. I ain't even tripping. But I'm telling you, this is how crazy it's yeah, getting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's getting to this point. <laughs> it's getting to this point. I said, could you stop? It is July. But this has been going on since they've been eliminated. Hating on, on Minnesota. Hating on Boston. Oh, we was. Uh, uh, yo, shut up and get ready for September and October. See this bitch ass nigga Halliburton on Olympic team, how Jay LeBrunson ain't on him. <laughs> Yo, he won't stop. Every day is something different. I know I was going on. I just got caught up in my mental, but uh, the Milwaukee Bucks are the biggest. Um, Boss. Yeah. Boss. That's what you call them. <laughs> Killer, you said a nigga can heat up. And I let that slide, boss. I didn't say nothing. I didn't even say anything. <laughs> I didn't say nothing, bro. I didn't even say anything. But um, as far as <laughs> as far as as far as not making moves, cool. Like, uh, pardon me, but if Dame Lillard is saying he's going to come in a different player, if Giannis is going to be healthy, if Chris Middleton, especially, that's the real key. Chris Middleton being healthy. You haven't been healthy in years, nigga. What the fuck? They not going to win with just Dame and fucking... Um, Greek Freak. Yeah, exactly. And I like my nigga... Um, you know, they power forward. I like that nigga. I don't know why I can't think of his name right now. He's, he's really good. But Chris Middleton is the fucking key. And if you don't step up and be healthy, they can forget about it. That's why I was so adamant about the DeMar DeRozan situation because... I would have said, boom. I'm not saying I, that's a great question because if you want to put him against Paul George, you got him against Paul George. You want to put a primetime Dame Lillard, I don't know if that's still a situation. You got him against Tyrese Maxey. You got the Greek freak against Joel Embiid. And then we'll figure it out as we go down, down the line with Boston. But if you're behind Philly and the Knicks, y'all got a lot to prove. So I'm going to go with the Milwaukee Bucks. Okay, so we're going to go to break. When we return, we will talk about that boy, Ryan Garcia. Don't go anywhere. She called this thing about was toxic. Four years and counting. Got you feeling like an option Maybe I'm my own problem, babe She tired of hearing I don't know My stubborn in me won't fall, oh, oh Dealing with this thing called trust But she really thinking about She wanna us. be free Why am I in this one Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog fantasy picks of the day. So we're going to talk about some summer league teams. So we got the Grizzlies versus the Jazz. Underdog fantasy has Zach Eady at 14 and a half points. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? Higher. Uh, come on, is Eady going to have more than 14? Lower. You're not going to give him that much playing time. Okay. Scotty Pippen Jr. is at 23 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Do you have him higher or lower, Cam? Don't let, don't fuck the, the trilogy up the family, nigga. <laughs> Legacy, you better be higher with all them stats they give me. Hi. Okay. Isaiah Collier's at 13 and a half points. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? Mm. I'm going higher. Okay. Lower. Okay. Download the Underdog Fantasy app and you can make your picks too. So over the weekend, Ryan Garcia was expelled by the World Boxing Council after using racial slurs against black people and Muslims on a live stream. He since apologized and said, I was trolling. I want all the killing to stop. I love everyone. Sorry if I offended you. Do you guys think <laughs> the issue was handled appropriately by the WBC? And then Let what do you guys laughing. think of Ryan Garcia's just continued trolling that has never stopped? Mm. This, is, this is a real sensitive issue when it comes to Ryan because... When you see Ryan um, doing the things that he's doing, part of it could be trolling, but it's starting to to come across as a mental breakdown, as a mental breakdown. And I say that from the aspect of 
just really being overwhelmed with um, success. I remember earlier when we first started um, taping this show that Killer brought up something to Gary Coleman. He got he got several bad things going at the same time. You could see some drug abuse there. You could see some alcoholism there. Two major things that you need help with already. And then you add the mental instability along along with the need for for acceptance. That's for, you know, you got a lot of things going on that I don't even think people could clinically really um, observe and know what they're looking at. Sometimes we think people are really tough when really they're 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 mentally challenged and and look at them as really like dangerous from the aspect of them being aggressive when really they're a problem to them to their own self. And it's just all of this is is present when you're looking at Ryan and and I wish he get some real serious help and it's sad that he made so much money so fast because the money is actually working against him. They say when you make money, money allows you to be who you really are. You know, money just um, multiplies who you are. So if you're an idiot and you get a lot of money, you just become a bigger idiot, you know. So he was already mentally challenged, and the money made him mentally just even bigger in that area. And sometimes this is a classical example of when a kid is broken to be a superstar. <clears throat> Like sometimes what it takes to to raise a kid up to a celebrity, they lose so many things as a child. And this is what we're seeing play out in his life because people can't really pinpoint where it come from. But I guarantee if you go back and look at what it took for him to get to this point, it was all of those things that broke him to get here. So now he ends up with a bunch of money, a bunch of success, but is a shell of a person. And we see that a lot with great athletes and great entertainers because they lost so much to be there. So that's what I think is it's, it's like seven or eight things wrong that, that Ryan needs serious attention about. And I think when people are thinking about Ryan, they're just seeing one part. But it's um, with what I know from um, the clinical aspect, he got like seven things going on. That's why you be getting the mentor gigs. That shit right there, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what gets you the mentor gigs that take you just to... <laughs> I did spell it out, though. That, that, that's what gives you them gigs right there. Alcoholism. I, that, that was, that was, that was, listen, no, no, I, yeah. that was pretty good. That was, Drug that was, abuse. That was, that was really good. Yeah. yeah. Until, he, until he's clinically diagnosed, fuck, get the fuck off your phone, nigga. You're in the phone too much. <laughs> You're on the internet too much. Put your phone down. Everything they said may be cool until they diagnose you. I don't want to hear it. If they ain't diagnose you with bipolar <laughs> disorder, schizophrenia, I'm not hitting you with none of that. I think Mercy was right. I think he got some shit wrong with you. Go get the diagnose so we can really be like, nah, you know the nigga's schizophrenic, right? You know he's bipolar, right? So we could go with that. You know where he's going now? Because he's like the racist, racist shit? I think I need to go to rehab. Nah, nah, <laughs> nah. Everybody goes to rehab once they get suspended for some wild shit. Niggas like, oh, I've been drinking too much. I'm on pills or whatever. Now you're going to rehab. I'm not jacking it. Pause. Now, what May said, you may need to take, take that in the heat because I think he has some, he may be right on some few shit, but I'm not jacking none of that until they diagnose you. <laughs> rehab is wild. So until he got his <laughs> hospital note. Yeah. You yeah. ain't going. <laughs> yeah, nah, I ain't jacking that. You get like gotta get diagnosed because you know why? You can get away with certain shit <laughs> when you got that paper. You know, like, oh nah, he's schizophrenic though. Oh, oh okay, I didn't know that. And yeah. then the sympathies kicks in. Yeah, niggas oh, feel sorry for yeah, you. Yeah, oh nah, I ain't know the nigga was sent to schizophrenic. I know, I know people with bipolar disorder. I know, yeah. like friends. You know what I'm saying? And but they, they got their paperwork and they got medicine. And they got medicine. And if they don't yeah. take their medicine, they bug the fuck out. Like, really bug out. Like, yeah. So, I ain't none of this shit. <laughs> now, you right, murder. These symptoms are yeah. what you talking about. Get the paperwork. You may get a different take from me. Until today, you're racist and you're saying <laughs> wild shit and you need to stay off the phone. Whoever's around him, say, 
This, what you're about to say, may not be good for live. It may not be good for a blog. It may not be good for an interview. You're wilding. Now, when you're trolling, see, that's the thing about it is that he uses the word troll a lot. I'm trolling. I'm trolling. You're fighting Devin Haney. I'm trolling. Who are you trolling? The Muslims and the blacks? What, it's, it's no reason to troll. You don't have a fight coming up. Who are you trolling just in general to be like, I'm going to get niggas like this or niggas like that? Mace made a great point. You got several issues going on. You yeah. don't need to be trolling a motherfucking person. You just, they took your victory away against Devin Haney. You got found guilty of the whatever. Ostery. Yeah, exactly. And now you're being racist. Now you're going to rehab. No, I ain't jacking rehab, bro. I'm not. <laughs> Yeah, because he's saying he's he's saying racist thing, but then saying he's a Christian. It, it's just the the wildest combination. Might be bipolar. Oh, yeah. Did you guys hear what he said? I'm just. I did. I did. Okay. Well, for Cam, basically, and he said a lot of things, but he said, "I hate niggas. I'm anti anti black. I'm the KKK. Hey, let's go bring George Floyd back to life and go kill that bitch." Yeah. He don't get no pass for that. Come on. You don't what, get no pass. I didn't hear that part. This is what I'm talking about. You don't about. get no pass. Come on. Come on, man. You better go get your note. <laughs> <laughs> you go get I'm your glad note. I said <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now you now I did, I already wasn't jacking it. Now I heard that. Yeah. I don't even want to hear rehab, nigga. Go bring George Floyd back to life to kill the nigga again. And you come on, my nigga. Come on. What, I'm just trying to figure out what. The fuck do you get out of that trolling if that's your quote unquote excuse? I was trolling. Trolling for what? what like, what's the re the recipient? Let me get everybody black mad at me for a minute. No, the drug called fame. Yeah, whatever it is, that's going to get you more hate. Yeah. Than, I mean, it make you famous, but it's going to get you more hate than any type of fan or love or anything. Because what happens with statements like that, even though, and that's the right thing boxing, which I did suspend them indefinitely. Um, I think that's a great call. Um, but what that gets is different... Um, attention? Attention, that's not what I'm looking for, but parties. Yeah. That gets the Muslims outside of yeah. your show. Uh, the, the, what's your nigga stat? You're from school. All these... Yeah. The, the, yeah. yeah, yeah. All these the kappas and... Kappas you know, and these the, niggas. The all the black, Yeah, all these people, all these different groups of black people will hate you, nigga. But that shit right there, I don't really see an apology where a black nigga going to sit there and be like, nah, I dig it. You was fucked up. Nah, you can't be... You can, Let me explain something to you, people that's not black. What I just heard the stat read... It's really, really no coming back from that type shit. Yeah. You know, a certain shit you'd be like, I slipped up and said, nigga, you KKK, let's go kill all the black people. It's real, it's, it's, it's no coming back from that when yeah. you're a certain type of black person. And that's just not going to happen. So, uh, you, Mason, I, and listen, a doctor know at this point ain't going to get it. <laughs> that's not going to get it, my nigga. So, yeah, people will people are support him on camera. Like, they'll say, you know what, um, I feel that. But off the camera, they're going to want to they gonna wanna try him. Pause. Yeah, yeah definitely. Absolutely. So even if they're acting like they understand, that's just because the camera is on. Right. Because you saw how quick my, 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 um, my, my feelings towards it changed that fast the moment right. I heard that. Doctor went out the building. Doctor, <laughs> <out> the building. <laughs> yeah. Doctor left the building, yeah. baby. Because I saw a guy online. I, after I saw what he said, the other portion, there was a guy in the supermarket, and they was trolling him because they was showing how trolling goes wrong. So a guy snatched this man groceries. You saw it? And he told him, we can go outside if you don't like what I just did. He didn't know the old man was strapped. <laughs> so the applause, the old man. <laughs> pulled out, ready to pull out his gun. He was like, oh, it's a troll. He said, I don't care, it's a troll. Right. You know, and all of a sudden right now, he, he's telling the man, he's like, please, mister, it, it was just a problem. He said, this guy over here filming, but you about to die on camera, trying to get famous. We need to bring the TV back in here, Nick. Yeah. Sorry. Well, no, all What's good. 
Um, I'm just going to add, like, even if you support him on camera or whatever you feel, I'm still judging you because even after he said, this is stuff everyone says, if you get triggered by a word, that means you are too sensitive. We joke a lot up here. A lot of people say different things. But when you say something like to that extremity, that extent, it's just like, if that's how you really feel and that's brought to light, I'm looking at you and everybody else around you different because the fact that you even feel that way, it's crazy. Like, I, I yeah. know there's different ways to fix mental health, but that's like a different level. <laughs> and let me let me share with you why it's not trolling, because you could not troll like that with Latino people. I don't care what way you try to spin that. You will not be able to make those kind of racist jokes towards Spanish people and it go over well. Even worse than Spanish people makes so it not worse everything is yeah. Wrong. Jewish people. Yeah. yeah. Won't ever see you again. Truth. Okay. So along the same type of topic, so Shakur retains his WBC title after defeating Artem over the weekend. How did you guys feel about his performance and who do you guys want to see him fight next? I don't want to see Shakur fight. I'm I'm just gonna be honest. <laughs> no disrespect to Newark, but I don't want to see Shakur fight nobody. I mean, it, it's like for him to be hanging out with Terrence Crawford and Andre Ward, there is absolutely no way that he's that he's fighting the way he's fighting. I mean, and I think that God kind of tricked Sorry. him out of his stance to where he was trying to show that he can he can be on offense, but he just need to accept he's a defense fighter. He's not he's not an offensive fighter, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, um, a lot of times people compare people to people that they are not comparable with. I mean, the more and more I watch him fight, the more I think of like Pinnell Whitaker and different people like that was defensive wizards. But he got to get some offense and he got to get some strength in his hands. I think. Um, when it went to 135 from 130, he lost a lot of power. Sometimes you're powerful in a different class, but when you go up, that same punching power doesn't translate, and he got to get that fixed fast because the next couple of fights that he want to take, he will need that power. He will even need that power, I think, against Devin Haney. He would, he would definitely needs something against um, Javante because I think Javante would just run like like obliviate him. I, at one time, people was talking like that's a matchup. That's not a matchup. <laughs> News flash from it is what it is. That is not a matchup, and that's not something he should keep calling for. And I really didn't like – so I really only had negative things to – to um to make him accountable for it. even the way he was talking to his grandfather during the time of the the in between rounds it just looked like he's not listening to his corner and all of that are bad signs for cocky fighters cocky fighters always go out under the ropes outside the ropes and I don't want to see that for him so shape up Shakur get back on on your thing, which is being defensive wizard, but leave that Javante alone, man. Javante should be um, a no contest right now. I only want to see two people fight um, Javante, and that's Tiafimo or what's the other guy name, or um, the one he's about to fight, Lomachenko. But nobody else should be thinking about fighting that. Um, fighting Javante right now. It's too much. It's too risky. Somebody said on Instagram, I was following it, I never see Shakur Stevenson fight again. That's too soon. <laughs> <laughs> Watch, you know, I, listen, man, I did, I, did, I did the right thing. It was on ESPN, so I recorded it. Yeah. And then I asked, I said, I'm not, because I watched the fight before that. I said, I'm not going to do two of these. I can't get this hour back of my life. Yeah. So I recorded, niggas said, nah. <laughs> <laughs> said, good. I don't have to watch. I got, I got home. I seen the 11th swell around. I seen, he, he's from Newark. He's fighting in Newark. 
And I, as soon as I turned TV on, I see niggas walking out. Yeah, niggas, niggas was walking. Fabio, shout yeah. out to Fabio. <laughs> Fabio walked out. Yeah, yeah, niggas, all type of niggas, niggas walked out. out. Then niggas was booing. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, you're at home, and they're booing you at home. And he kept saying, I'm going to knock him out. Oh, he was like, I, Between the later rounds. Okay. Well, see, uh, he fucked that chicken up last night for the future fights because nobody wants to hear, see you fight Tank right now. Um, and look, we got to really take this into consideration. As much as he's a great defensive fighter, and they're like, oh, he may be one of the best defensive fighters since Floyd. People really, really tend to forget that it's two Floyd Mayweathers. It's Money May and it's Pretty Boy Floyd. Yeah. Pretty Boy Floyd was out here thumping with niggas. Yeah, boys. getting niggas out. Yeah, of beating boys. niggas the fuck up. Knocking niggas the fuck out. Money May figured out, I'm going to just box your face off, keep all my scruples, make all this money, probably... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten times what I was making, and leave the game with, with this chicken. Y'all can't go to Money Mayweather without being Pretty Boy Floyd. You can't do that. Y'all niggas better go look at the tapes. Go look at Diego Corrales. Go look at uh Ricky Hatton. Yeah. <laughs> go go look at all. Go look at Shane Mosley. Go look at these niggas he beat up. Yeah. <laughs> he just didn't do that. You you niggas can't go straight to. Pretty um, money Mayweather, and I'm just saying if that's your strategy. And another problem is this is what I'm learning, murder, is this. In my opinion, it's not learning, it's just my opinion. Floyd set the bar so high, you know. Mm -hmm. Before Floyd, I'm talking about, if you're looking at Mike Tyson, if you're looking at Roy Jones, if yeah. you're looking at Muhammad Ali or whatever generation you Sugar came Sugar Ray, all that. Sugar Ray. All of them had losses. Yeah. Floyd left with no losses, so now everybody's scared to lose they owe. Yeah. Like, the bar is set too fucking high, not undefeated, to where niggas like, damn, I can't lose, and now it's costing us as fans to see good fights. After the fight, Shakur uh, calls out Lomachenko. Listen, listen, man. We, I don't know what to tell them what to do. <laughs> I, have, I don't even know if to have the answer. <laughs> <laughs> because you know what, I've heard it. it ain't like he lost. It ain't like he's losing, you know how the yeah. way the way people are viewing <laughs> Shakur and it's fucked up is that like he on a three fight losing streak. He didn't even lose, but he's boring. So like you know what I'm saying, yeah, like the yeah. niggas looking at him like I can't fuck with him. He didn't even <laughs> lose. So I mean, I mean the part that makes him that that he's getting so much heat for is shout out the um boxing. Um, whatever to do, boxing ego or whatever. What is it called? Something like that. Shout out to whoever I heard say this. But he was he said that he he's constantly calling people out like he's a smoke fighter. He's not a smoke fighter, you know. He's telling my he gonna knock niggas out. He's sending niggas bottles. Remember all of that? Like you can't be sending niggas bottles. And fighting like this. The nigga that send you bottles knock you out in the first round. Right? If you if you send a niggas bottles, you telling niggas pull up, you telling people you're a spank, um, Javante, it's like you can't say that and then have these kind of outings. If he wasn't talking so much, trying to garner so much attention, then it would just be like he just won the fight. But when you talking super crazy, and then going out there just being defensive, that's when it doesn't make sense. You know, and I think that's what's getting him all of the heat. He's running his mouth. He's talking like a nigga from up top, pause, but he's fighting like a nigga from Princeton. You know what I'm saying? So you got to decide which one you're going to be. Listen, what I will say is this. It was a great fight Saturday night. Yeah. Was it Shakur? If you guys do not know, it's a young nigga named Kamel Moten. Yo, this kid is a problem. He's 4-0, just turned pro a little while ago. Four fights, three knockouts. He's he's a miniature tank. He's a, he's a problem. This I watched his fight. Never first now rock out. He wants problems. 18, yo, this nigga's 18 years old with grown man strength. If y'all want to see the best fight that happened last Saturday, Google Kamel Moten and watch his fight. 
that's the fight everybody should have been paying attention to. And I know he's young and I know he's on the rise. Yeah. And Shakur is established. But this kid looks really dangerous. Only thing I would say is that, and, and I'm not knocking him, that he got against some later rounds because he keep knocking niggas out in the first round. <laughs> That's how strong this niggas is. He just he knocked a grown man out. This nigga's 18 with grown man strength. Kamel Moten, you are officially being watched and you're on the clock. Salute, nigga. Yeah. And the guy that gave us that information was Boxing Ego, so I wanted to put some respect on his name. All right, so now we got to discuss Bronny James. So he had his summer league debut at the California Classic. He had four points, was two for nine for shooting, and played 22 minutes. Ahead of his second game, he will sit out due to a swelling in his left knee. He is expected to play Wednesday for the final Classic game against the Heat. So with the information that we know and then what we've seen, how do you guys feel about Bronny James' start so far? Mm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. I'm gonna let Cam lead the way, lead the way on this. I, you know, this is PR at its best. You know, there's marketing and then there's PR. This is great PR. He's hurt. So if he's hurt, then that's the reason he had four points. This is PR at its best. I want to hear what Giller got to say. I don't, I don't have nothing to say about this, but there's marketing and then there's PR. For all you young kids watching this, this is PR at its best. He didn't have a bad game. He was hurt. His knee is hurt. And that's why he set out. He wasn't 100%. Look. You know, them my niggas, but we gonna call it like we said. Nigga, you ain't play good. Secondly, how's the second game and you hurt? You fucking 18, 19 years old. You can't be hurt the second game of the season. Come on, secondly, yo, nephew, look, I don't like all the smiling. It's too much smiling for me. <laughs> I don't like all that out there, hunky. <laughs> hey, nah, get, nah, come on, man. What the fuck, nigga? Get that shit your pops got. Pause. I don't, I'm gonna keep on. I don't like it, nephew. I don't like it. I don't like you hurt. It's only the second game. <laughs> You're playing up there in Golden State. I don't like it. I don't like your field goal percentage. I'd rather you, I'd rather you had scored 25 points and missed 52 shots. Give me more. Give me. It's your team. It's Summer League. Now, don't get me wrong. I know you got to play within the system and all that. But do you really no, got to play within don't. the system? That's what I just about to say. But do you really got to play within the system? <laughs> you already got your contract. <laughs> go crazy. Yo, go crazy. That, yo, Neff, I don't like the smelling. I don't like being passive. I don't like all that. I'm trying to fit in when you're supposed to stand out. Yeah. Pause. Listen. And, and there's no reason for you to be hurt. You, 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 you didn't play college main last year because of something different. We know that was personal. No disrespect to us that whatsoever. But I'm talking about as far as your legs concerned. Your legs should be fresh. Just see that you're working out. Do it through your legs and did all this shit sideways. I don't want to hear the injury shit. I don't want to hear it. It's too early. And it's the second game of, of fucking summer league. I'm not jacking this injury shit. Now, if you want to sit out but rotate players, cool. Nah, I'm not jacking that. I don't like your field goal percentage. I don't need you to step it up. That's what I'm going to need you to do. I'm not with it. I'm not. I'm going to tell you what you should do. Since Killer said, nephew, I'm going to give you the cheat code. This is what you do. First thing you do is switch your number. Embrace it. Embrace it. Pause. Wear number six. That's the first thing you do. Get number six. Get your hair back corn rolled. You, you, you played better when you had corn rolls. Cut all this off. And wear Kobe's. Wear the lime green Kobe's. I'm, I'm, when you look good, you play good, you feel good, and you out there like you don't really care about nothing, and you got to switch that persona because everybody other than us, I mean, are going to be on your back about everything you do, and I want to see you really do well, but I think in order for you to do well, you got to embrace it, man. LeBron is my pops, and so what, nigga, like I said, they signed me $7.9 million. I'm about to show y'all niggas for all y'all naysayers. 
That got to be the attitude. It, whoever's telling you to be polite, it ain't time to be polite. Niggas is on your neck. Pause. Like the dude that you was playing against, he had 30-something. Everybody is going to target you. Everybody wants to show that you don't belong here. So you you got to you go see the movie Spartan or 300. When the little boy said he, they wanted to put him in Spartan, LeBron, they left him on the mountain with the wolf. And if you come back, nigga, you in. It's that simple. Nigga. And if you, you die out there, you don't belong out here. That, that's, that's really what got to happen here. Because there is some killing you, but the way they're positioning you, it's not bringing that out of you. We might need to take you with us to the hood for the summer and then bring you back and say, okay, he ready now. Hit killer up. Killer going to hit me up. Go play in Dykeman, nigga. Go, we'll take you to Dykeman, yeah. nigga. We'll we gotta take bring you right you to, to the Michelle hood. tournament on 127th. Yeah. Um, pardon me, on um, Fifth Avenue. You need a girlfriend 19th. named Lakeisha and all that. Yeah. Ronika yeah. and them. You need yeah. to be with Ronika and them. And then go back to the Lakers. That's go. a murder, you know. Talk about. <laughs> yeah. He need to there be talking to, yeah, yeah, to Pumpkin and them. <laughs> 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 we'll bring him back right, bro. I'm telling yeah. you, bro. Yeah. yeah. Spend the summer with us in Harlem, nigga. <laughs> Chill and then he can come back different. Savannah might try to shoot us, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck y'all did to my son. You just want the best for him, you know? Yeah, that's a fact. What you don't want to happen is this. Is that... It'll be two years. Look, time is flying before we know it. It'll be two years that went by. You're averaging a single single, and your little brother come and be the nigga that, you, that we thought you could have been. And he come with that attitude and that, and that mystique that we were just talking about, and he be the one. Now, I'm not sitting there comparing it because I think it's two different things. Yeah. But don't let him LaMelo boy you. Exactly. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Because it's the mindset. The talent is there. The athleticism is definitely there. It's just like the the pro game is slower, but you got to come in like Ja Morant. You got to come in like, like I'm here, bro. Mm -hmm. Don't let them fool you. Yeah. I'm really here. Yeah, and, and you made a great point, Mason. And even in sense like this too, that the beginning part you were talking yeah. about, yeah, LeBron, my pops, and so what? Yeah. And fuck all that. It is what exactly. it is. Exactly. Yeah. You ain't get your shot, so what? Yeah. They pick me, and, and that's how I was supposed to be, nigga. It's fake. Mm -hmm. Last thing before, I, and I don't know if y'all saying this to say, I was talking to Rich Paul. Yeah. And he was saying, you know, about nepotism, talking about, you know, we're like our generation leading for the, the next generation. Mm -hmm. um, and he was saying how he's talking to one of his Friends, I won't say it was a it's a it's one of these billion dollar companies that we all know. I don't yeah. want to put it out there. Um, something that we all go to, but his 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 mm -hmm. man owns it. He's the grand he was grandson into it. Now he was the grandson of the person who created it. I know I don't want to say I'm going a lot because I don't want to say the name and put the person out there. Yeah. So now the grandson runs it who's around Rich's age and everything. Yeah. And he said, Yo, bro, I know y'all grew up rough, man. But I'm not gonna apologize for hitting the sperm lottery. I'm just not gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> that was wild, for Rich Ball. That was wild. I'm gonna let you know that. Yeah, I no, get what Killer's yeah. saying, but that was wild. That yeah. that might be you. You might be first team. Yeah, yeah. But whoever told him that, he's the one who really yeah. set the pause. But he's he's unapologetic. He's, yeah, he's right. That, you know, whatever. That's my what I'm saying. You win number six, yeah, nigga. Yeah, yeah, yo. I can't help that my grandfather came up with this shit. And and I'm not talking about this, but how you gonna be mad at the Crocs? Cause they grandfather stole McDonald's from the McDonald brothers yeah. and made the billion. You would. Like when you talk about Paris Hilton and all that, man, listen, I'm not apologizing for pause hitting the sperm lottery, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> it was a million of them niggas running to get out of here. Yeah. I made it. I think that's the part that got him getting so much flack that he's not embracing it. Pause. He got a I wear the arm sleeve, number six, everything. Like, I'm running with it because it's, it's, it's legacy. And if it's legacy, legacy only works if you embrace it. 
You got to embrace it that all these commentators don't feel this way about me. And it's for me to prove it, but I'm going to live unapologetically. I'm not going to try to be timid. I'm not trying to be passive aggressive. Nah, nigga, it is what it is. He named me LeBron James Jr. for a reason. And that's it. I got to live with that. So I might as well embrace it. Well, this was a great conversation. At the end of the day, Bronny, we're hoping you feel better before the next game so we can see you play. And remember, number six, cornrows, <laughs> arm sleeve, and lime green Kobe's. And tell me I'm wrong. And then la last thing I'll say real quick is, listen, them games up there, wherever y'all playing up there in Golden State, Vegas is going to be vicious. When, they, when you get out here, it's going to be like a real NBA game. Now, it ain't going to be an arena, but niggas is going to be here. And you think that pressure up there is something? When you get out here to Vegas, niggas is on you. Everybody's coming to see you play. The arenas, the, the gym is going to be packed. The scouts are going to be in the building. The fans are going to be there. Listen, you got no pressure on you. Next week, you're going to see it. It's going to be a big difference. Not have said any better. Okay, that is all the time that we have for today. Thanks for watching. And as always, it is what it is. What you want, nigga? Everything, nigga, super size. Super size. Two Big Macs. Like when they doing them two for five.